Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Montana here with another video on how to understand price movement. We're going to be talking specifically about timeframes. Now, why are timeframes so important? Because price is fractal. Why can I say that today? Because price is fractal, you can see what price is doing through multiple lenses. You can go from a monthly time frame all the way down to a one minute time frame. Now, this applies to you. Let's just say you're a passive investor or an investor. You're going to be looking at larger time frame zones because you're not interested in taking, you know, two or three trades a day or maybe two or three trades a week. You want to be in a position where you're going to, you know, be in it for a couple of weeks, couple of months, even up to a year, so to speak. So you're going to be using larger time frame uh, charts simply because they take longer to develop. Whereas if you're a trader like myself, I'll be in two or three positions a day and I might be in them for five minutes all the way up to a couple of days. I use smaller time frame charts, five minute charts, 60 minute charts, up to a daily. But either, either or, or if you're a, or if, if you're an investor or passive investor or a or very active trader, you regardless want to use multiple time frame analysis, and that's looking that's looking at whatever asset from a satellite point of view all the way down to a microscope point of view. If you're an investor, you're going to be looking at monthly chart, maybe all the way down to a daily, so to speak. And if you're a more active trader, you're going to be looking at a daily chart all the way down to a 60 minute or five minute chart. Now, as I've alluded to before in understanding um, uh, candlestick patterns, understanding all these different kinds of names like Harami, Doji, Bullish Engulfing, Bearish Tweezers, and so on and so forth, you don't really need to learn all the names and all the different patterns because you can look at you can look at price through a different lens. What price is doing on a five minute chart looks a bit different. It still is exactly the same, but looks a bit different on a 10 minute chart because price is fractal. Now I'm going to go over a similar example, but a bit more a, a bit more clearly on the most basic understanding or basic example of what price being fractal, hence looking at it through different time frames, looks like. Let's just say we're looking at Apple stock. And on the left, we're looking at a five minute chart. And on the right, we're looking at a 10 minute chart. And we're going to look at 10 minutes worth of price action. So here we're going to have two candles. And on the 10 minute chart, we're, we're just going to have one. Price opens and falls to close at this level. Now this candle has already been completed because that's because it's been five minutes. Your 10 minute candle is still is still developing because it needs 10 minutes to close. So it still needs another another five minutes for it to form. Let's just say price falls into an area of demand and rallies above the open. This is on a five minute chart, bullish engulfing. On a 10 minute chart, it's a hammer, but notice how you have your open and close and then your open and, to, and then closes above the open on your five minute. Here it's the exact same thing. Price opened here, fell, and then rallied to close above the open, giving you a hammer. It's the exact same price action, just looking at it through a different perspective, which is why if you're looking on a five minute, it's a bullish engulfing, but on a, on a 10 minute, it's a hammer. You don't, need to, you don't need to learn about the names, just know what price is doing. That's a very good example of how time frames work. Same price action, just different lens on what price is doing. Now, I want to show you two quick examples of what using multiple time frame analysis, one from a, a passive investor perspective and one from a bit more of an active trader perspective. Let's see what those look like. So here's a scenario that an, a, a passive investor or an investor would be looking at. It's a larger time frame chart. We're looking at a weekly chart where you're going to be in the you're going to be positioned for a couple of weeks, maybe to a couple of months. Hence, because price moves slower because price takes longer to develop on these charts. You're given a really nice rally base ballistic movement out of that basing. So rally base rally. If you want to learn more about that and how they work and how they make for fantastic zones, here's the image of of the of the video that I go over that. You have a really nice demand zone, and then you have a fantastic drop. This is a pocket of air. If you want to know how those work and why they make for fantastic profit potential scenarios, that's the video to talk about that. You're given basing, and then just this week, price traded above the basing, giving you at the very beginnings of a reversal pattern. If you want to learn more about those, check out my, check out my reversal pattern video. Now, this whole zone is pretty big. This is the whole rally base rally. What you want to do in multiple time frame analysis is find where the smaller zone exists on a, let's just say, daily chart. This is a weekly within this weekly uh, rally base rally demand zone. So within this weekly demand zone, 
you want to find the origin of a large move on a smaller time frame. This is it. This you have your drop base rally. The origin of all large moves, whether to the upside or to the downside, are where imbalance exists. And if it's to the upside, it's where demand exists. So it would make a lot of sense that it that demand exists there. And sure enough, when price enters an area of demand, it rallies. From, from this area, you're already up 4 or 5% in two weeks about, as opposed to have, having bought whenever price entered your weekly demand zone. So right here would have gone against you and you just now would have been barely, barely back above break even. So risking the smallest amount maximizes your profit potential. And because you were given a beautiful pocket of air on your entry, the origin of that fall is all the way up here. This is where supply exists. So you're given a lot of distance to run. And because it's a lot of distance, it should take a while for it to rally all the way back up there. If you risk very little to go all the way up there, you're maximizing your profit potential. And that's, it's a simple, it's as simple as that. Using timeframes to your advantage is just finding a really good weekly zone or a really good monthly zone. And within that uh, weekly or monthly zone, you start looking into smaller areas, such as a daily. Nothing too crazy. You don't have to go down to a 60. Just go down to a daily, find, find the origin of the big move within that area. And then that would be an area where you want to be, you know, either going long or going short. And as a as an individual passive investor, this is this is as simple as that. Large time frame to smaller time frame, satellite to magnifying glass, and then you end up risking a lot, you know, like the zone where you have to risk money is a lot, is a lot less. Having said that, every single trade you take, you always you always risk 1% of your portfolio. You never want to do more than that. I know I haven't talked about risk management, but I'll be going over that. But if you're risking 1%, you're already up four or five in two weeks when the S&P gave you, what, 18%? for the entire year. Yeah, that. No. So here is another, or here's the example for more active traders. Here you have a daily chart. Now here you're given a beautiful rally, base, rally, and a after the rally, you're given a base drop, reversal pattern. So both this demand zone and this supply zone are really good. Let's find out how we find the smaller zones within these zones. All right, so this, daily rally base rally that's the whole daily zone within this daily zone what are the two demand zones that the that are the origin of powerful moves that's a drop base rally and another drop base rally strong ballistic movement away from those away from those areas within your daily zones those are the two demand zones and this rally base drop daily supply zone, well, what's the origin of this swing move on the on, on intraday? By the way, this is a 240 minute where every candle represents four hours. It's right here. So after price rallied and fell, you're given a demand zone. So when price enters your area of demand, instead of buying here, which makes the area huge, and you know from here up to supply, that's a good area, but why, why not get it lower? You bought here and we got stopped out. That's perfectly fine. Being stopped out is part of the game. Love your little losers. Little losers are awesome. Big losers are terrible, which is why you always trade with a, st a stop loss and you do multiple time frame analysis so you can risk very little to make a whole lot. Your second demand zone, that one worked. And sure enough, you risked this much to take it all the way up to here. Guys, that's easily. 15 to one. And if you risk 1%, you're up 15% in two weeks. Once again, the S&P, the S&P gave you 18% for entirety, for the entirety of 2020. You're already doing that in less than a month. Just do the math for what that would be for the entire year. And that's just trading one asset. That's just bonds. You've got thousands of stocks and thousands, or not thousands, but a lot of different currencies and futures and all this different stuff. So you buy here and when and before you and as you're approaching supply, let's just say you you know you took profit and you're interested in shorting because that's a really good area of supply. So instead of shorting right here at the origin of your or at, at the at the uh, at the beginning of your daily zone, get it a, a little bit higher and get the 240 minute the the intraday supply zone. And what happens when price enters enter supply, you take it all the way down here. And guys, not to beat a dead horse, but within your daily zone, which is right here, you find the origin of your intraday ballistic movement, 
where you have rally base, rally, ballistic move, and it's as simple as that, guys. Just multiple time frame analysis. <laughs> it's, it's not that difficult. Large time frame, and then within that large time frame, good area, you find the smaller time frame, the origins of, of large moves, and happiness ensues. So those are the two examples of how an of how a passive a passive investor, if you're looking at you know going into one trade a month kind of thing, not too not too not too crazy, and and the move lasts for at least a couple months. Look at a monthly, weekly chart. Maybe take it down to a daily. If you're a bit more of an active trader, where you want to be getting in, you know, once a week, twice a week, start with a daily, and then go down to a two forty, maybe a sixty minute chart. So now I have a couple more examples for you, and then that'll be about it. This is the euro. This is the euro future. So it's not it's it, it's not forex. So it's a lot uh, because it's it, it's it's uh, it's currency futures. It's just a lot a lot smoother and a lot easier. So you give it a drop base, drop base, drop. That's a really nice move to the downside. Wouldn't you like to be in it? Why? Yes, I would. This is how you would look at it for a multiple time frame. You're given this area of demand right here. That's your daily rally base rally that got broken. So you know you're in a downtrend at this point. And again, continuation pattern. If you wanna find out how that works, that means price is gonna to continue to a downside. So you know you should be selling, you should be shorting areas of supply. Well, this drop base drop, and the reason that this, and I'll make this bigger, this drop base drop, although it's only one candle, and normally you wanna be looking at something with you know two or three candles or something like this or that, those are really good representations of rally base rallies and drop base drops. Because this closed as a neutral, this is a, this is also considered basing. And I've said that before in a previous video. On this 240 minute chart, and this is a daily by the way, but on this 240 minute chart, that's a large zone. So if you shorted right here, then it would have to drop a long way for you to even make three to one, so to speak. So what do you do? You go to a smaller time frame, and, and see what exists within that area on a smaller time frame, on a smaller time frame chart that is the origin of a big drop because you want to be shorting. So you go to a 60. The, here, no surprise, you see your drop, base, drop, ballistic movement that is in this large area. This area right here is right here on a 240. Instead of risking that whole amount, risk less. And that way, when price falls, when it's already down here, you're already up four or five to one. You're maximizing your profit potential and price falls all the way down here. If you short it here, you're up at least 10% in seven days, seven business days. That's a week and a half. Smaller time frame zone within your larger time frame zone within your daily zone. And you're catching the drop base drop to the downside. That's a big move. This drop base drop, that's a really good supply zone on the 240 minute. But that's also another very large zone. Let's see if we can find a smaller area that we can maximize our profit potential with. Well, what do you know? Within this drop base drop on a 240, here's the 60 minute supply zone, the origin of a large drop. What happens when price re-enters that area and you short, it falls. So on top of you already being in, so on top of you already shorting here, you get to add to your position here. This, this trade already gave you at least 10 to one once you're already down here. And this one already gave you another five to one once you're already around down in this area as well. Multiple time frame analysis, large time frame to small time frame. And last little, last little piece of candy. Like I said in previous in previous videos, drop based drops are not only um, patterns of continuation, so you can catch the short and continue going. Same applies to the upside, by the way. But they're also really good areas for when price re-enters. This is a drop based drop on a daily, surely there's an area of smaller intraday supply within that very large supply zone. Let's see where it exists. This is the whole area on a day on, on a 240 minute that is your daily drop base drop. So the area you're looking at on a 240, on a 240, this would be your supply zone. It's the, or, it's the origin of a large drop. Let's see if there's anything on a 60. On a 60, that would be, this would be your, let me make this bigger. 
on a 60, that would be this zone and we can probably tighten it up even a little bit more. That's a little too tight. Let's go for that. That would be that. And then, hey, look, drop, base, drop because you have this candle right here. This candle, that closed halfway. Once again, I've, I've, I've gone over on how candlesticks, you don't need a full you know, structure like this drop, base, drop. If you have a neutral closing, a neutral closing candle, that is basing. So right here is also another area of supply. We have two zones within this daily supply zone that are the origins of big drops. I wonder what happens. Entry, large move. So on top of you catching this whole move to the downside, you're given a whole, a whole nother at least 10%. So let's just say within two weeks, you're already up like 35% or like, yeah, 10, 10, 50. Yeah, let's just say 25, 30. Not too bad. All from using large time frame analysis down to smaller time frame analysis where you're getting really good daily zones. And within those good daily zones, you find the origin of the small moves within those. They tend to be really, really powerful and tend to work your way. Last example, this is called a head, a head and shoulders. Here's the left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Now, a lot of people think they're just formations that just occur, they don't, and this is why. And we're gonna use large time frame analysis. Here's your, your daily rally, base, rally, and then price breaks your demand zone. It's not, it's not making higher highs and higher lows. If you wanna understand more about uptrends, I know, I'll just stop talking about that. <laughs> so the, the uptrend is broken. This is the demand zone that was holding up this daily rally base rally. And it was broken by a 240 minute drop base drop, origin of a powerful move to the downside, ballistic movement. Pocket of air, which means it's gonna, if, if price rallies, it, it's gonna have nothing to stop it on its way into supply. That's that's a pretty good zone, but let's see if we can catch a smaller, let's see if we can make it even smaller. Within this whole area right here, that would have been your 240 zone. Your 240 zone would have been something like this. It would have been this big one. Well, within this big one, there's your 60 minute origin of the large move to the downside right there. You're risking very little to make a whole lot. That one trade alone is 30%. Not bad for what? Five days? A week? <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd love to see what the S&P can do for you in a week. Not, not as awesome as 30. So that's what that's what time frames are, and that's what it and 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 that's how it, that's how it looks within large structures. Because price is fractal, I cannot say that word today. Because price is fractal, within certain certain candles, like within that that ten minute hammer, you have a five minute bullish engulfing that we that we talked about at the very beginning. If you look at large time frame supply zones. Within smaller time, within um, within that same area, on a smaller time frame, you can find the the true origin of where the imbalance actually occurs. So when price re-enters those areas, you can maximize profit potential. I hope this helped. I'll see you guys on the next one. Mm -hmm.